Hello again, this is going to be a short video uh, just to give you more information on variable names and functions in OCaml. Uh, we must be familiar now with uh, how to declare news functions in OCaml. Um, the first thing I wanted to cover is just to give you more information on variable names. So in general, a variable name may contain letters, lowercase or, or uppercase, uh, digits, and the this symbol here, this sign, the single quotation symbol, and the underscore character. Um, but always remember that a variable name must always begin with either a lowercase letter or the underscore character. What that means is we can't start a variable name in OCaml. We cannot begin or start a variable name with a digit, with the apostrophe, or with a an uppercase letter. Uppercase letters are left for um, module names and things like that. Also, we must not have a variable name as underscore only because I'm sure I've mentioned this before, if, if I haven't, then the underscore sort of represents I, the I don't care case where, for example, I want to retrieve a value from something, but I don't care about that value, so I just say uh, underscore. I'll, I'll show you, I'm sure I've shown you that, but if I haven't, I'll show you that in a minute. So let's, for example, go to our top loop and try to declare a few variables. So that, that's straightforward. Let's variable call it a, for example, equals 4. That's fine. Let a underscore equals 4. That's also fine. Let's underscore a equals four, 5, for example. That's also fine. Notice here that every time it actually gives me the variable name, value a is of type int and the actual value is 4. Likewise here it gives you the variable name here and here. So if I, but if I try to for example begin the variable name with a digit of course that won't work. Yes, complaining. If I begin for example with uh, underscore, uh, we've done that. If I begin it with a capital letter anything equals 9, it'll complain, it thinks that uh, this is sort of a sort of a struct or a module or something like that. We'll learn about this in the coming videos. Um, and as we mentioned, we can have the single quotation. That's also fine. Even in the middle of things, that's also fine. But, but for for the underscore only, if you notice every time here the if the declaration is correct, it shows me the variable name and then the value bound to that name. If I say underscore, it'll, it'll only give me the value. As we mentioned before, by saying underscore, we say we don't actually care about that. Um, and if you have, if for example, you happen to call a function that has a side effect, some function, a function that, for example, prints out a value or does some computation, but you don't care about the returned value, then you just can call it and by by doing let underscore equals you know that function name with the parameters and that's it. So for example, we have uh, a function in the OCaml system to print out, for example an int or say print underscore int and then we pass it an int of value 5 you notice here that it prints out 5 but it returns this sort of unit that we spoke about before what we can say is we can say let for example unit equals print 5 for example and the value will be just the same just print out 5 I can say for example let a equals for example print 5 and A will be a unit. So print out 5, yes, but A will be a unit. So because I don't care about the value of A here, I can say let underscore equals uh, print in something, maybe in my code, for example, in nothing, and that's it. Yeah, I hope that makes sense. So that underscore is for sort of, you know, nothing. I don't care about the result. This is the first thing I wanted to mention in this video. The second thing is that for OCaml functions, they can actually be nested so we can have a function inside a function inside a function inside a function and they will only th their scope will only be inside that big function that w that they were declared in and you know we mentioned before OCaml is a functional language so functions are sort of um, sort of uh, first class in the sense that we can pass them as arguments we can return them as values, well. so we, we can have a function that returns a function, believe it or not. We can save them in um, data structures, like we can save a function in um, <coughs> a list.
list or an array and so on and so forth now just to demonstrate the nesting of functions let's assume for example we want to have a function that I'll just move this a little bit up so you can see things uh, let for example let's have a function that's a multiply 5 and then x and we pass it the value of x and it multiplies it by 5 but inside it I can say for example let new value equals x times 5 yes but in the, somewhere in my code let's assume I'm having a, uh, some a lot of code here and then I want I need a small function to compute something so I can actually declare it inside this function I say for example let my fun that receives a variable for example uh, let's call it for example y equals let's say it returns y squared y y in so this is a new function inside this function and the word in here is that in the following code I have this and then I can ca I can call file this for example let um, maybe f equals my fun and then pass it maybe 4 for example and it will return 4 times 4 as you can see here so this is a function inside a function and remember even inside it I have another one another one but just be careful about the scoping of every function that this one is only accessible inside multiply 5 so I won't be able to see it from outside it um, let f equals my fun 4 so f will be now 4 times 4 and then I have v x times 5 and then maybe I can return now something like f times uh, v and then that's it so what I can do now is of course as you can see now it automatically works out that the variables are of type integer it infers that from using this multiplication for the integer the float as you can remember is star dot for, for the floating number so what I can call multiply 5 notice that I can't see my fun it, it's only visible from inside multi mu multiply 5 I, I forgot to, a y there but don't worry so let's say if I, if I pass it now 5 for example what will happen is it'll do x which is 5 now 5 times 5 25 and this one is called f with value 4 so that's 16 25 times 16 you work that out and the value is 400 um, so 25 times 16 is what is 400 yes but my fun now although it's actually declared inside there but I won't be able to call it so if I pass it value 5 it won't be able to see it because its scope is only inside multiply 5 uh, actually one interesting thing about scoping is um, let's for example assume that we have a variable and this is for the top level here for the top level uh, let's assume that for example I have a variable j equals 4 yes and then let's assume that I have a small function in which I say let uh, for example mul maybe uh, j and pass it a value of t equals and I can say I just say for example j times t yes it returned the mul multiplication result of j times t now if I call if I redeclare j now and say j now is 5 rather than 4 but now if I call mul j notice that mul now sees this j not this j j at this time when it was 4 if I call it with 4 so t is 4 now and j what do you think j is 4 or 5 let's apply it and see what happens as you can see it still knows that j is actually 4 rather than 5 because this was declared before and then j was used here that's just a, a quick idea of the scoping of values uh, I do have another interesting thing to tell you about functions in OCaml but I think that deserves a separate video so I'm gonna stop now thank you very much for watching and I'll see you next time